Hello everyone, Clutter here and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing the Pyro from Team Fortress 2. And just like the other videos I've done, I've done the Scout and the Soldier. Next in line is Pyro. So now, I will say, um, this build is actually quite fun, I will say that. <laughs> um, it's not 100% accurate, obviously, because it's two different games. So... Keep that in mind, and of course, like I said before, these builds that I'm making out of this series is all meant for fun. Not much, like, function, so most of the builds won't work on, like, uh, Death Sentence or Death Wish or whatever, mainly on Mayhem stuff, and yeah. One more thing as well, this month, or next month, or even both of them, next couple of months, let's say that, I'm going to be very, very busy, once again. So I don't know if I will be able to make videos, but like I said, I will try my best to get something out, but they won't be well edited or well like entertaining or whatever. So keep that in mind and yeah. Next two months I'll be very busy because of Christmas and the whole like getting a job thing. I wish I could take YouTube as a job, but for reasons I can't say, I can't do it. So anyway, I hope you guys like this video and yeah, enjoy the rest of the video and here is the skills that you need for this build. So in Mastermind all you need is Stable Shot because it's a spare point. So for this build we are going to be getting um, Flamethrower and Shotgun because that's the most logical thing for a Pyro. So we're going to be getting Underdog Aced. Shotgun CQB aced, shotgun impact aced, close by aced, and of course overkill aced because, over, um, what do you call it? Flamethrowers are pretty weak these days, especially when you have more ammo because it lowers your damage to like three or something. <laughs> so I decided to get overkill aced to get my uh, damage increased, and a little disclaimer as well you have to get a kill first for it to work. So you need to kill someone with a shotgun and then switch over to your flamethrower to kill someone or you can just use a flamethrower like I did. I meant to say shotgun but you know. Anyway, it, I just double checked as well. It does say this overkill ace does not work with melee damage, throwables, uh, grenade launches and rocket launches. So it does work with flamethrowers. Just saying that. <laughs> over in tank we're going to be getting resistance ace because every single bloody build needs resistance ace to get rid of those bloody flashbangs and of course transporter basic because throwing bags is fun what die hard aced uh bullseye aced shock and all basic because we're gonna be using flamethrowers we don't need to worry about shields anyway and um iron man basic as well to get that extra armor we're gonna be using the lightweight vest as well so i think that's more logical to do that because the pirate does have 175 HP in the game, so you do get roughly a hundred ish armor and like 200 plus armor. I mean, HP, so that's a bit more logical in that way. So I would, that's why I went for Iron Man Basic and then the Lightweight Vest. I went for Die Hard Ace to get extra armor for your Lightweight Vest, so yeah, well, all vests, you know, but you know what I mean. And of course, we're gonna get Scavenger because again, spare point. <laughs> And over in Technician, another spare point on Hardware Expert. And of course, just like every other build, the um, Scout and um, Soldier build, we're going to be getting Lock and Load Aced because um, firing or sprinting while hip firing is very useful, especially when you're a pyro running around with a flamethrower. <laughs> so, again, it's just more logical to do that. And of course, another spare point on Hardware Expert as well. You could get rid of the uh, Hardware Expert, um, Stable Shot and Scavenger to get something else, but this is how I set my skills up. Over in Ghost, we're going to be getting Duck and Cover Basic and Parkour Aced. Again, reloading while running is always good. <laughs> we're going to be getting Second Wind and Optical Illusion as well. Again, it's just like what's to me anyway as a really standard thing in every single build especially second wind basic because you get that 
extra speed boost when your armor breaks. It just gives you that much, much more of a chance to get into cover. And of course, the rest of the 35 points you're going to be having, maybe, if you're infamy level 5 and above, you'll have 35 points left, is going to be 9 lives, a Swamp Song Ace, and Fain Dirt Faced. Again, not really use, not really a logical event, but it's very, very useful to have in every single build. Especially if you're going above Mayhem and Death Wish. So, and because the Pyro has an axe, we're going to be getting some melee skills as well. So we're going to go for Martial Arts, Basic, Bloodthirsty, Aced, and Pumping Iron, Aced as well. So, for the weapons, for our primary weapon, we're going to be using the Flamethrower Mark 1. I went for this one because it has more damage than the other one, so it's just logical to do that. <laughs> uh, stat boost doesn't really matter, but if you have extra ammo, that's always good. And I went for well done for the flame canister. It's not really a canister, I guess, but that's what I'm, that's what I'm going to call it. And I went for this combination of stuff because we have 17.7 .7 damage and um, 1440 ammo. Or total ammo. So for my secondary I decided to go for the Grim 12 gauge shotgun. Now this this is the part that I said in the intro. Uh, it's not really that realistic like matches the game perfectly or whatever because you can't like I said it's two different games anyway. I decided to go for the 12 gauge shotgun because of Grim 12 gauge because it's something different. If you want to have it a bit more realistic you could go for the GSP S and then get rid of um, the barrel like that and the stock to make it like this but to me this is a little bit of a spoiler I'm gonna be using this for the heavy because it's like the family business <laughs> just a little bit of a spoiler right there <laughs> so yeah and you could go for the locomotive as well that's kind of similar to to the default truck gun in the game but again I went for the other one because it has more rapid fire and as you can see the stats right here compared to the two. The Grimmer has more ammo, more total ammo, more rate of fire, less damage, less accuracy, more stability, and all that stuff. So I decided to go for this for that reason. And the stuff that I have, you have a choice between um, Dragon's Breath or Triple Zero Buck. I decided to go for Dragon's Breath because it is a pyro build. Just to be more realistic like that. But if you want more damage, you can go for the Triple Zero Buck. That's up to you, but I prefer that. I went for the Queen's Crown Compensator because of extra accuracy and one point of damage. <laughs> Stat boost, um, I went for stability, but you can have any, anything you want. I went for auto fire lock. I didn't get the barrel thing. I went for LED combo, extra ammo, which is the big the magazine and I didn't have a sight because sight increases your accuracy which I don't need any more accuracy and the iron sutton is actually perfect as it is so I didn't go for an, a sight. Now this is the funny part the melee weapon I actually went for the um the axe that's in the game where is it I went for the fire axe right here but because of the swing speed of this is so bloody long and bad, I just kept on dying as a result. So yeah, I went for the survival tomahawk as a melee weapon because it's an axe but a bit smaller. It's a stretch, yeah, but <laughs> I kept on dying every single time I used a fire axe because the swing speed was so, so slow. For the throwable, you have a choice between Molotovs or Incendiary Grenades. Either way, it's fine. Your perk deck is going to be Inventrader. I decided to go for Inventrader because of the last perk, is you gain 20% of your HP every single time you hit someone, but there's a 10 second cooldown. 20% of your HP is a lot. I will say that because it takes like five hits. So it'll take about a minute to get yourself back up to full HP if you're almost dead. Roughly five, maybe six, maybe seven. I don't know. I haven't, I didn't do any math with that. So um, you could go for sociopath because the pyro is a bit of a sociopath, honestly, but I decided to go for this because it seems more better. If you want HP and armor per kill, you can, 
but the damage is that low that there's no point. So that's why I went for this. Again, that's up to you. If you want to go for a Vichota or that, or you can just go for another one like Muscle, Armor, or something like that. It's up to you. And for my deployable, I decided to go for ammo bags. You could go for doctor bags or anything else really, because I don't have any skills for them. I ran out of skills. And like I said before, you could get rid of some spare points that I had, which was stable shot and um, hardware expert to get that basic. And then you can probably get rid of something else that you don't want to get armor, to get ammo, I meant. So yeah, that is the skills, the weapons, and the perk deck, and everything else. So, I hope you guys like the rest of the footage that I have for this, uh, with this build. And yeah, next in line is the Demo Man. So, I hope you guys enjoy that one. I don't know when I can get that one out. I'll try and get, it out and get him out sooner as this one has been. What? I'm rushing the hell out of this, I'm sorry. I'm... <laughs> I meant to get some other videos out today, but something went wrong every single time. So, like I was trying to do a, a um, typical day of Payday 2. There were so many bloody bad players, I just could not stand it at all. Um, I tried to do the big oil map with no clues to what engine it is, because I got recommended it. <laughs> so I decided to do it, but that didn't work. I tried to do um, security level level 8, so security level 8, I mean, that didn't work because there are so many enemies on the map that I just can't move anywhere. I'm basically in the same spot like for probably 10 minutes straight just to move one little bit up and I need to wait another 10 minutes to do that, whatever else. And there's obviously then places around the map, because I was doing uh, Mercury Station, around the map that's just impossible to access, and I need to be there because that's where the bomb is. <laughs> so like, it's so bad. And of course, the amount of enemies that's on the map is really bad for my computer, so it's like it's lagging on offline mode, basically. It's so weird. So that's why I'm rushing the hell out of this video, because it's already 6.30pm. I woke up like 7 hours ago. Ever since then I was, been, I was trying to get a video working. And I'm finally getting this one out. So, yeah, it's been 7 hours and I've just made a video. <laughs> I still need to edit it as well. So yeah, that's enough ranting. I uh, hope you guys like the rest of this video the, and the rest of the footage I have for this build. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Mark has asked for help guarding a weapons transaction in Alaska. Says he's not expecting trouble, but wants some reliable security just in case. Looks like it might be an easy payday if you can put up with the cold.
under the circumstances. I'll make some calls to find out what really happened to Locke. Fucking wick. Didn't think I'd see your face again.
captain! It's a captain! Look out! It's a captain! It's a captain! Look out!